Okay. It is 12 o'clock, which means it is time for choosing the right paper for your application. Um, today, we are joined by Patrick Moore and Jeff Mills. Um, Patrick will be presenting because I hear he is the one with all of the knowledge. Um, so I guess with that, uh, guys, take it away. And thank you very much for being here. Go ahead. Uh, thank you, Sprite, very much. Again, uh, I'm Patrick Moore. I work in the Beaver Paper Print Lab here in uh, Lawrenceville, Georgia, right outside of Atlanta. And um, I'm here with Jeff Mills, who is our um, fabric uh, textile uh, product manager. Product manager. And the rep for Condi. And the rep for Condi. Thank you. So yes, yeah, so sublimation transfer papers, choosing the right paper for the application. So a little about Beaver Paper. Uh, we've been in the business for paper business for 40 years, established in 79, uh, recently acquired by Kohler Paper Group in, in Oberkirk, Germany. And they are... Um, currently making our, our dye sublimation papers. So um, the collaboration with development, um, product chain um, inventory. So we're not running out of, of any paper. So we have plenty of paper. And um, just all around, just updating, updating machines, updating uh, technology, updating uh, personnel. So it's just been a win-win for this, uh, for, for Kohler Paper to, to come on board with us or for us, and it's been exciting. Uh, two distribution sites, uh, again, we have uh, a distribution site here in Atlanta and as well as California. And our product groups, uh, the, fam the familiar name is the Text Print brand. Uh, we also have a Protex protection tissue for the um, uh, calendar belts and the um, flatbed machines to uh, keep the dye away from the the the, the, the following substrate that you're going to transfer to, so you're not wasting any material. Um, again, we have a, a brand of um, textiles, uh, multiple different types, um, anywhere from backlit to um, flag banner. And we have some new ones with, uh, can I say that? Go with the wallpaper. We have a wallpaper that's that we're pretty excited about, that Jeff's real excited about. And um, last one is our Tech Zones. So the, the Tech Zone brand is actually for the cut and sew, uh, the pink, the white, the craft, you know, separating tissues, the per, um, perforated tissues or, or papers, things of that nature for the cut and sew market. The sub uh, transfer process. Um, I'm hoping that I'll, I'll try to be brief. I'm hope uh, my anticipate uh, my if, if my audience is what I think it is. They pretty much know what dye sublimation is already, and they're here to get a a better feel for what type of paper works on on the substrates they're using. But in for for brief uh, explanation again for those new to the to the game, if you will. Uh, dye sublimation, it's a, you know, it's a digital process where, uh, digital printing process, excuse me, where um, the ink is, is printed on um, specialty papers and those papers are pressed up against uh, substrates with polyester in them. And that heat and that pressure and that time excites the dye particle and allows it uh, not allows it, but makes it jump from a, a liquid into a gas where um, the polyester receptive sites are waiting for that dye gas to, to cloud it, if you will, or bloom into it. And, and then it's chemically captured there and uh, has the staying power of not being washed out and um, becomes a very vibrant image. So the, the again the dye transfers from a gap. No, oh, sorry, I already said that. Uh, so one of the, the the shortcomings that 
uh, the dye sublimation process has is that it's all it's it's polyester specific. So uh, anybody trying to use dye sublimation on cotton is going to run into um, a serious uh, problem with the the dye washing out because the the dye does not want to doesn't have the um, the polyester chain or receptive uh, sites in the, the chemical formula to, to, to grab the dye and freeze the dye in, the, in the, the natural fiber, if you will, of cotton. It just doesn't have it. So that's where you're going to have um, some issues associated with cotton. Now, you know, in this, in Condé, in, in this open house, in this, in, in Condé's, um, some of the presentations that are out there, you know, they do, you know, it is, it is possible. Um, there are, you know, uh, technologies out there where you can, you can lock the, lock the, um, you know, the toner or different things to, to decorate cotton. But for this particular process, um, you know, we're we, we stick with the polyester and that polyester coating can, you can put it on plastic, ceramics, glass, metal, um, and that's what provides the um, receiving layer that, that gives you the, the quality and the, the vibrancy and the, you know, the image goes where you want it to go. With the, uh, the benefits of not distorting, not, not fading. Um, that's a, not fading on, on a long-term basis because I don't know if anybody is aware of this or not, but one of the, the, one of the small things or a disadvantage of the dye sublimation is that uh, dye is not UV stable. So if you're making a flag and you expect it to last a year and a half, you're going to be sorry because the sunlight is going to fade it. But that's why car flags are only five dollars because you'll lose it before you see any fade. Um, here is uh, an image of our of the process that I kind of walked through. You have your transfer paper with the image on it, the, the, your substrate, whether it be polyester fabric or a metal, is is pressed up against it with the heat going through the paper, and the dye blooms and decorates the the fabric underneath. And on the right hand side is a calendar press where the heated drum is your hot plate and the fabric and the paper and the brown is, or, is, or the yellow is the tissue. They all sandwich together. And this dwell time here to this dwell time here activates the dye, sandwiches the dye, uh, Sandwiches the substrate where the where the dye want where you want the dye to go, and it's released, and you get your whether it be a garment or roll to roll substrate out of that drum. This is typically for the the forty four inch sixty four inch users that want to um, mass produce a significant amount of substrate, whether it be um, koozies or t-shirts or lanyards, just um, mass production of, of, of a, you know, just a lot of, a lot of inventory, if you will. Components of the dye sub, of dye sub. So um, I like to consider this as a pie. Um, so you're going to need all these things in order to do dye sublimation. So you need the digital printer. You need the dot, you need the ink, the dye sublimation ink. You need RIP software. So you need transfer paper, that's us. Protective tissue, that's us. Heat press, substrate. Uh, substrate could be, you know, what's your, what's your niche market? Um, there's so many out there, whether you wanna do mugs, whether you wanna do metal, whether you wanna do fabric, do you wanna do shirts? Do you wanna do clipboards? Do you wanna do koozies? Uh, basically, anything with polyester, you can decorate. And the beautiful thing about dye sublimation is um, the, the mass customization, if you will, or 
there's there's a season for every substrate. So you could say, you know, Christmas, you could say weddings, you could say um, St. Patrick's Day, just there's there's so many opportunities for you to to find um, products that that your that consumers will like and will buy. And if you do a really good job with the dye sublimation, they'll come back and buy again. So just some more, um, some images of some of the uh, substrates, if you will, available, uh, coffee mugs I failed to mention. Um, home decor is, is making a, is, is, is a growing market as far as the pillows and the curtains and, and fabric for, for sofas. Um, the, the, the ability to create your own cell phone cases has kind of stormed the market, if you will. Um, everyone's trying to update and get a new, a new, sh uh, a new image on their phone. Um, flags, banners, tablecloths, swimsuits, um, band, um, trade show graphics, as far as, uh, big shows and stuff. Um, uh, advertising. So there's just, it's just unlimited how many, uh, how many opportunities you can, you can, uh, are available in the dye sub market. So that brings us to why, why we're here, uh, choosing the right paper for your application. So we, we touched on several, gosh, I mean, there's so many different substrates. So one of the one of the things that we like to do at Beaver Paper and, and with Condi is to kind of promote, you know, what what paper works best for 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 your application, whether it whether it being the coffee mugs or whether it being a T-shirt, whether it being um, flag, whatever that you know. Um, how many is it? How many? What kind of heat press do you have? So all those factors are around what printer, what pay, uh, what printer, what substrate, what heat press, what um, substrate, all those factors weigh in on what paper is best for you, whether it being a lighter weight paper or a heavier paper. Um, so, and by and large, we, you know, here we at Beaver Paper want to want you to succeed so we want to give you the best you know put your best foot forward and, and and give you the the recommendation or or the the assistance to to choose the the best paper for you and I wish this would go away so i could read that so the differences between text hold on a second with me oh okay so the differences between the text print paper so one we have papers that cover all the digital printers on the market small and large ink uh let's see different inks for different print heads require different technologies different chemistries and uh over the course of the the 40 years that we've been in existence we've been able to um create and re refine and develop and and update um, coatings that that work on on all these you know all the different types of uh, printers that are out there. So we have um, the desktop printers out there, the roll to roll printers out there, the forty four inch, the sixty four inch machines. Um, when 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 you guys get so successful that you need to jump up to, to, to rolls of 44 inch and 64 inch, we have that paper available for you and multiple chemistries that you could dial in your process. So when you're making thousands of koozies a day, um, you won't run out of paper and you'll have the best paper for you for that particular job. Um, coffee mugs is another example. Um, so by and large, the, uh, the thickness of the paper will, will vary based on your, your substrate. The chemistry will vary based on uh, what, what print engine you have. 
and the the width and the sizes of the paper will you know will th that will be based on you know again what printer you have but also what you know the volume that you're that that you're producing so um, of our papers there are six product families uh, many are familiar with the desktop it's um, it, it it used to be um, the so desk uh, text print DT heavy has a little R there the little R there is to remind everyone that you know, so we've gone through a, a branding if you will when when Kohler came on board we wanted to uh, give ourselves a good face facelift so text print DT uh, with a little R heavy is formerly our um, Rico paper but it's been rebranded DT heavy it's 120 grams so anybody using the uh, Virtuoso or Rico printers, the, the DT Heavy with a little R is the paper that you're going to want. Um, we also have a 105 GSM paper. This is uh, formerly our uh, text print XP. It's the, the sheeted version of our XP product. Um, we've rebranded re that DT with a little XP right there. Light. So we have heavy and light, and that's because we have 120 and 105. Uh, the 105 is 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 our is our go-to paper for all our Epson machines. So any uh, Epson ink um, related desktop machines are going to use the DT Lite. We also have um, the the text print paper, the XP paper in in roll form, and we carry that in 105 as well. But we also carry it in a 125 and a 140. And those are um, multiple weights are there for, um, we alluded to it earlier in the fact that sometimes um, older heat presses or um, older printers use, you know, they might have um, heavier ink loads might be required for, for the output of a, of a large four by eight um, metal uh, mural sheet of aluminum so um the heavier more cardstock type paper is is a lot easier to to manage if you will so um by and large that's going to be um presented you know that will be a recommendation based on the equipment and the the printer and the the substrate that's that's being used so so we have that variety there to to, to make sure that that we cover all of our customers um, the one to fourth one is our is our adhesive paper line. We have a text print sports and a text print sports plus. The the difference between the two is the the sports without the plus sign is our light tack version, and the sports plus is our heavy tack. Um, early on in our we discovered the the necessity to have uh, two different levels of adhesion for um, the substrates that are out there. Some of, some of the substrates are, uh, you know, have more stretch than, than others. Some of them have what we call bi-directional stretch where they stretch in both directions. Some of them only have unidirectional stretch where they stretch in one. Uh, some of them don't stretch at all. Um, so, so there's, there's fabric. So there's, two levels of, of adhesion to make sure that we cover um, all the levels of, of stretch out there um, without, without um, you know, to make sure that when you're using the tacky paper, it's not, it's going to adhere to the, the heavier stretched fabrics and not, you know, and not promote the, or not, cause the ghosting that that you see when when you see stretch when you're when you're dealing with stretch stretch material um but also you don't want to go you know sometimes uh the heavy tack might might grab it too hard and it would be too hard to peel off so when you start peeling off the the image and you peel peel off paper and you tear and you ruin your substrate um, we felt it necessary to bring in the light tack as well 
because some users with uh, microfiber is, is an example. Um, uh, some users use like a very lightweight fabric that requires the, the tack so you don't bounce your, your paper and ruin your output, but you don't want it so aggressive that by the time you get to it to tear, to, to peel it off, it's not super stuck to the, to the fabric and ruins your output. So that's why we have two. Supreme was the sports plus. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Jeff. So, so again, um, with the rebranding, we used to have uh, a brand called text print Supreme, but that is now the sports plus. So anyone familiar with the text print Supreme and its adhesion level know that we have a lighter adhesion level of the Supreme called uh, regular text print sports, which is a, a new product, if you will. Um, fifth one is a text print UT, UT for utility paper. So this is, uh, the, this grade of paper is, uh, we have it in multiple weights, if you will, associated with um, the, the higher end users, if you will, the, the high speed users that, that want to print like really fast, roll to roll, um, lightweight prints to heavy prints to, you know, so the, so the lighter weights are, are, are another option based on what your ink load is, what your printer is, what your heat press is, um, and what your substrate is. So, so based on all those factors, we can point you in the right direction to give you the, the, the right paper you want. And la uh, second to last is our MP. So our text print MP is, is basically uh, strictly a ro uh, large roll uh, coated paper. It's similar to the XP, but lighter in weight. And it's um, the best way to describe it is that it's, it's for the textile market, the banners, the trade shows, the, the backlit type that require a really heavy amount of ink more so than the UT paper can handle. And because it has a heavier coating or a different type of coating on it, it receives the ink, it lays it flat, it dries it fast, and then it allows it to calendar and, and dye and dye fabric, uh, 10 foot wide fabric um, efficiently and effectively um, without uh, concerns of, of wrinkling or, or anything of that nature associated with a lighter weight paper. And lastly, we have a, have a moda, which is our extreme, you know, let's go extremely lightweight paper, 25 and 39. These are very light papers. They are designed for very lightweight fabrics, Fashions. fashion industry. Um, I'm thinking like the silk-ish type fabrics, things of that nature. Um, but that's usually roll to roll. And, you know, like uh, think of curtains. Think of like the, the, the see-through sheen uh, curtains is kind of an example of that, of that type of application. And that's kind of the, the list of the families. Uh, Patrick, can you talk yes. about the tacky paper a little bit more? Absolutely. So what was the question? There was actually a lot of questions. Um, so okay. well, what I, I know which one of them is, no, it's not, a, we don't have it in a sheeted form. <laughs> right, I, I know. Um, what, uh, what products would you, what products would you use it on? What products would you not use it on? Okay, so one of the benefits of, of, the, of the tacky paper for one, for, for, for desktop, well, not desktop, but, but for, for a clamshell heat press um, operator or person, one of, the, one of the pitfalls that a lot of customers will have is that when you, with a manual press or, or a pneumatic press, you push the button, it presses, and then it lifts up and then when it lifts up and releases the pressure, one of the first things that'll happen on a, on a non-adhesive paper is that, that it has a tendency to kind of bounce and it does its little bounce and sometimes that'll shift. 
And what that bounce will do is it'll shift a little bit and it'll, it'll cause ghosting on your image and just ruin your output. So one of the benefits of using the, the adhesive paper is to uh, resolve that or minimize that to what not even minimize it resolves it and makes it go away basically. So the paper stays on the fabric until you're ready to peel it off. So, so uh, when the, the, the heat press is finished doing and it starts to open, you slide it out or you lift it up and then you can peel, you can actually physically peel the paper from the garment and not have that ghosting issue. The other, the other major benefit of the adhesive paper is that one of the things I didn't mention was, um, well, you have the, you have the stretch. So whenever the paper is stretched in a calendar press, it has a tendency to shift on on non-adhesive paper. So um, the the non so the adhesive paper allows you know uh, remedies that shift in the in the stretch of the fabric going through the calendar press as it's being fed through. So when it's pulled and pushed, or if you will, that adhesive layer keeps the the fabric in the image where you want it to be. So that it minimizes ghosting in that regard as well. Shrinkage. Yeah. So the one thing I, I didn't touch on, which I'm, I'm glad that you that there was questions about it is depending on what your supplier is or where you're getting this fabric from, a lot of stretch fabrics or if just regular fabrics in general are going to shrink. And it's a little known you know, uh, not a lot of people are aware of the the shrinking of the sh that sh that fabric shrinks anywhere from five to ten percent. Sometimes ten percent is a little high. Let me go three to five, yeah. but three to five percent shrinkage of 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 a fabric in one direction or both can cause the can cause you to to ghost your can go cause you to ghost your image. So one of the a couple ways to alleviate that is you could pre-press your fabric for like five or like 10 seconds, and then that'll pre-shrink it. Or the other one is to is to go with a, an adhesive paper where the adhesive paper minimizes that that shrinkage, if you will, and causes and, and, and prevents that ghosting. And based on, you know, where you get your sub, you know, a, a lot of a lot of manufacturing fabric manufacturers out there are stretching their fabric when they're drying it because they need to they need to reach a certain width so they make they they hit that certain width and then they cut it and then they send it out but then you know once it's hit with heat again it wants to draw up so that's a little inside baseball on on some fat on on fabric um, manufacturers but that's what you're seeing when you when you see that shrinkage is 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 a method to prevent that is using the adhesive paper. Um, David Gross here. One of the comments that, since the question was asked about what the use of these tack papers are, they are simply for soft substrates. So they would not. Oh yeah, good call. For a hard substrate, um, you you have uh, much more dot gain issues with a with a tack paper. Um, the other question was, what about the 570? And we've had mixed reviews of using the tack paper for 570. So um, question for Beaver folks has been, you know, what is your take? Our problems have been that we've had a couple of clients that have really loaded the paper down with ink and they've had drying issues where, where lighter coverage seems to be fine. Um, what we probably need to do is just do a custom um, uh, paper ink profile for uh, the tack paper so that we're we're putting down the correct amount of ink. Uh, what is have you had any feedback on the F570? I have. I have a I have a little bit. I have a couple tips. Um, one of the things that I, that I've noticed um, with the 570 is that it, it can print really fast. And one of the, um, in, the in the software, there's a, there's a high speed box that you can check. If you, well, first there's two. 
there's uh, a section in this, uh, I think there's a checkbox on the simple settings. If you uncheck the simple settings, that opens up a, the, on the right-hand side, uh, bottom right-hand side, it opens up a, a, a couple more options to, to, to print. And in there, there is a high-speed box. If you uncheck that high-speed box, now the print is going to, you're going to print slower but you have to because the tacky paper it does not have the same coatings as as some of the you know some of the normal desktop papers so it's not going to dry as fast as those papers so you have to artificially give it some more time to receive that ink and dry and dry in appropriate manner and by unchecking that box that that buys you some time, if you will, associated with um, drying. Um, that would be a suggestion that I would do. The other one would be um, staying away from the high speed printing. I would stick with quality in that same little area. So, so go with quality and uncheck your high speed box and, and try your output there and see what you get. Um, and then, as David had mentioned, you know, optimizing it with uh, a profile that will um, uh, reduce the ink and not, you know, and provides, you know, a good output on a soft substrate would be, um, would also be ideal. So all three of those things will, are definitely in the works, if you will, to get, to get our adhesive paper into that 570 market. Thank you. Did I, did, did that, did that help? Yeah, we, I think ultimately um, we just need to develop a, a paper and ink setup for the tack paper. Um, but slowing it down obviously um, is, is going to give it time to dry. It's just a matter of, you know, since really black dries a little bit slower than the other colors, it's just challenging when a, a print has heavy blacks. Sure. And, and, and uh, so another thing I could, I could suggest is in the, if you dive in deep into the, I don't know how, 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 how deep we want to go in this, but there's, there's a, a spot that there's a place uh, buried in the, um, I'd have to, I forget where it is on the, on the software, but you can actually physically um, lower the, the black ink channel. Um, and I've had some success with, with finding a sweet spot associated with your substrate uh, of, of lowering that ink demand um, manually, if you will, before you hit print, after you un uncheck everything. Okay. And, uh, yeah, and I know had, what you mean. Yeah, I had success there too. Um, it, unfortunately, Anybody I don't, out there I don't, I, help I don't, yeah, I don't have that. I don't have that software in front of me right now. Otherwise, I'd say right click here, left click here, right hit click here. But that might be something that uh, that you guys can put together on a walkthrough. Yeah, yeah, we certainly can. OK. Um, uh, any any more questions out there, folks? They <clears throat> people are really curious about the chart. And if you have a chart that um, shows what paper works uh, better for um, which substrates and oh, right. um, and also uh, what size do does the tacky uh, paper come in? What size rolls? So so I spent a lot of time on this chart, in but we actually in this presentation, I have a I have a breakout of every one of these. So well, I, I think I think what people are asking may be a, a slightly different question. So what they're asking really, and we do have that information here in our instructions is, you know, if, for instance, you have a desktop printer, uh, which paper do we recommend for which substrate? Um, obviously, if you have an Epson, you, you probably should be using the, the DT light paper. Um, which is really the, the text print XP. If you've got a Sawgrass or a Rico printer, then, then the text print R paper. Our instructions do call out 
which paper we would recommend. Um, but in general, I would say the desktop papers are, are pretty universal. Um, in other words, the results from one paper to another, uh, comparing the text print paper to our, our DITRANS SPP paper are, are comparable. Um, on certain products, we would, we would tell use this paper because um, maybe the substrate really doesn't like the other paper. Um, for instance, my recollection is on our, on the sublist slate, um, I recommend the DITRANS SPP. It just works better on that coating. Um, in general, the text print papers, I think, are a better fit for soft substrates as they um, release more ink. Um, so again, it's, it's a balance, if you will, and having the text print paper, the DTR, the DT, uh, XP uh, in our line is a, is a great compliment. So in general, I would say most of the um, papers we're talking about are interchangeable. Now, with that said, I don't recommend that you use the XP paper um, in a RICO or a RICO based sawgrass printer. Um, the ink simply does not dry fast enough because those printers are, are much faster than Epson printers in general. And you will get tractor wheel marks um, if you've got a, a graphic with heavy black coverage. So um, don't do that. Stick with the paper that is formulated for your printer. If you're not sure, then simply call us. We can help you. The tack paper for the 570, um, I would say, again, going back to it for a second, um, is a game changer. And so um, you just need to make sure you, um, you buy the smaller core uh, that is on the paper because your 570 will only support a two inch core. So um, just make sure, and, and the width really, you need that 100 foot as well. So it's two inch with 100 foot. But we can help you with those um, kinds of things as you need them. But again, the tag paper uh, would only be appropriate for, for um, soft substrates. Okay, thank you. All right, so our uh, next slide is uh, kind of another breakout, if you will, associated with the, the, the groups that we touched on on the last slide. So we do have the, the DT heavy for the, for, the, for the RICO machines and the DT light for the, the Epson machines, but more specifically, um, both of these papers are soft or, and hard straight, a hard substrate um, recommended and um, with with uh, you know with the good blooming results, so the the fortunate part about these the the chemistries of these two papers is that they allow for the dye release against the a hard substrate or a soft substrate, regardless of um, of the sorry, not regardless, but irrelevant of the. Uh, the, the, the dial the, the ink load on the paper so so basically it it's able to, to handle all it's kind of a, a robust paper that the the, the text print XP brand is the is the is the go-to robust paper that we that we suggest for uh, a customer that's using any substrate that they can come up with that has polyester on it. So anywhere from metal to coffee mug to clipboard to koozie to t-shirt, the, the XB paper and, and the Rico paper will work. Um, so again, we, um, we do have two different uh, text print papers. Um, the R does stand for Rico. So uh, a Rico print it, print it, print head is used in the uh, sawgrass virtuoso machines, as well as the, uh, the, the early uh, uh, regular RICO machines. So um, one of the big uh, differences as, as David alluded to is that uh, 
that that that, ink, that printer is faster but but not only that the actual ink in that print head is different it has a, a different viscosity if you will think of um, I'll separate it as as the Rico ink being more oil like and the Epson ink being more water like it's just got a different viscosity if associated associated to it when it goes through the printhead um, that Rico printhead is actually um, you know quote unquote a gel sprint printer and um, by and large it um, that viscosity allows the ink to sit on the surface a little bit longer than say a, a water-based ink would and that's where you get kind of get the slower drying and that's where we offer the the rico he dt heavy uh paper versus the the epson um xp light um that's one of the main differences is that um the the chemistry of the coatings are 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 designed to to allow the ink to absorb into the paper faster with the rico printer than the epson um, but but by but still allowing the dye to come out of the paper when you when you transfer it. Um, so uh, some of the new so some of the newer um, customers out there that are just getting into the dye sub business. Uh, we've gotten this this question before enough so that I wanted to throw it in. Um, why can't we just use copy paper instead of uh, our paper for one? Well, one is the, we've alluded to it a lot, but the, the chemistry of the, of the coating of the paper um, allows for the dye to remain surfaced on the sheet and not get buried into a copy paper that doesn't have a coating. So the, the copy paper is just gonna receive the ink and it's gonna just soak it up like a sponge and it's going to get trapped in there and it's not going to it's not going to gas out or if it does you're not going to get you're not going to get the blooming that that uh that a coated paper will get so that's one of the main differences is that our coating chemistries are such that they slow um the dye well well they they, they slow down the drying enough to where the dye has remained surfaced or trapped in the coating where it can be released out when it's heated and, and turns into a gas um, where if you were to do that with copy paper um, the, the copy paper doesn't want to let that once that ink gets hits that copy paper it's not going to want to let it go and that's one of the main uh the main reasons why um uh, coated paper is uh, a sublimation coated paper like the the DT heavy and the uh, the XPs are are so vital in the, in this dye sub process. In addition, you you lose you lose your sharpness, um, which we call dot gain, because when the ink drops on plain paper, there's nothing to hold the ink in place, so it just spreads out, uh, like you drop ink on newspaper print. So you, you lose a little bit of the sharpness. In some cases, you, you, you lose a lot. And then as, as mentioned, the plain paper has trouble letting go of the ink. So that means your, your substrates are gonna tend to be more dull than they need to. And so, you know, I suppose uh, there's somebody out there that gets adequate results from using copy paper, but, um, I don't think it, it really makes sense to do that. Um, the results is, are, are certainly significant enough to, to use paper that's, that's uh, designed for sublimation. So the right paper for your application, uh, again, TextPrint XP is uh, uh, the, our most robust coding. Uh, it's, our more, most applicable coating. It can uh, it designed for multiple print heads, uh, multiple different print heads, uh, other than the uh, the Rico print head. You could use it on softer, hard surface trade shows, signage, home decor. So I know that someone wanted to to get a table associated with 
um, you know, what paper works for one substrate. Um, they could use these slides after this is done, but we can also, um, I put a note to myself to kind of uh, put a, put a, a, a table together, if you will, that could be like a, a cheat sheet associated with our paper. I thought it was a very good idea, thank you. But the uh, XP paper is, is by far the most robust. Well, we put in a little table on the right on what kind of um, sizes our paper is. Um, we have it in rolls from 17 all the way to 126, that's inches. Um, we have it on two inch cores and three inch cores. And of course, we have the sheeted product available. Uh, the text print sports, again, uh, sports and sports plus. Sports is the low tack, sports plus is the high tack. And we uh, have, um, you know, the application is for um, uh, fabric that stretches or fabric that shrinks. Or, you know, or fabric that has a, um, we put in here fleece. Um, so sometimes you might have to use a, 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 a significantly light pressure on your substrate when, when you're doing something like a blanket. You don't want to smash the, the, the blanket flat and cause it to, you know, just to look like a sheet of paper instead of a nice soft fleece blanket. So one of the one of the uh, things that you can do to um, to keep the the integrity of your blanket is to use a lot a low pressure. And um, the bad thing about using low pressure is you have a tendency to to bounce your your sheet from your your substrate, or um, you know you need to make sure that you have enough pressure in order to keep the you know the dyed in the direction you want it to go. You want it to go into the blanket and not, you know, out the sides or anything causing bleed. So there's um, there's another application associated with the adhesion paper that that allows you to, to print on, on he uh, heavier piled substrates without um, without smashing them and, and, and uh, ruining that substrate. Um, again, we have them in uh, multiple widths. 24 to 126. Uh, the wheelhouse would be 44, 64, uh, 24. Um, we don't we don't have it on a two inch core, but I think we I think we are. Um, but we want to make sure that when when we provide that, we're gonna we provide it with the knowledge that there is going to be some some tweaking, if you will, on how to use it because of the. Uh, because of the the poor drying that adhesive has uh, adhesive paper has drying but it's a lot it's a lot slower drying than say the xp or the desktop versions because of the coating chemistry um so another question we get is is the adhesive paper available as a sheeted product well no, not yet. And one of the reasons we've covered already, but predominantly it's because one, the, 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 the printers are printing too fast for it to, to dry. Um, I guess if you, if you wanted it and you wanted to print one at a time and take it out of the tray and hang it there for about five or 10 minutes and print your next one, um, I think there's, I think you can, there's something to be said about that, but um, here at Beaver Paper, that wasn't very well received because you're open up, opening up Pandora's box. If they're not going to read the fine print on how to use it like that, then, then, then uh, we're going to, you know, we'll have a lot of egg on our face, if you will. Um, the other part is um, the lighter weight paper, if you will. It's nine, our, our tacky paper is 92 and that lends itself to curl. Um, so there are some issues associated with that. Um, I know that someone's already typing in the question of saying, well, why don't you put tacky paper on a heavier paper? Um, we're in the process of that, but there's, there comes a, or we're looking into that, but there comes a time when 
when um, you know the practicality of it and the cost and and the things of that nature uh, weigh in on 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 what the return of investment it is. So we're looking. You know, we'll we'll see if enough if if enough people want it or demand it, then that might be something worth pursuing. Um. Well, guys, uh, I don't know how many more slides you have, but um, oh, no. I am I am out of time. But oh, no. um, if if you guys will uh, email me this presentation, I'll go ahead and upload it to our uh, to the Zoom account, and then of course this will be broadcast later on in the chat. Um, and yeah, I just want to thank you guys for a great presentation, and thank you for being here. Thanks. Well, I'm sorry I got too wordy and didn't get to the end. Well, well it's always David's fault. We'll blame David. Well, I hope. Well, I hope. Um, I, well, I hope. I hope everyone enjoyed our our time. And if there's any questions, um, just I guess if you want, if they want to pass them to you, and you can pass them to me, I, I'd be more than happy to to answer any and all questions that you get. Yeah, fantastic. You guys all know my email, swood at condi.com. Send me your questions and I will forward them along. Thank you guys so much. And um, thanks, I guys. guess I'll see you all in the next one. Bye. Yeah, yeah thanks, Brian. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.